yeah. doctrine. And, um, and so it allowed me to really be more thoughtful and careful about some of those things and think about how I might respond. Um, some of us are really good at getting to know our students. And some of us are not. I'm just pointing at myself. It would take me halfway through the semester before I felt like I started to know my kids. But I had uh, an, an unnamed early morning seminary teacher come to my house this week and sit down with my two kids. Came to our house and did it. I'm not saying you have to do this, but she's going to know those kids a lot faster than I ever did as a seminary teacher. And so please come on in. Just a couple seats. Some right here. Oh, look at you brought me fruit. That looks fresh off the vines right there. <laughs> Brother Anderson? Yes, ma'am. Um, I was thinking of when those questions come up, and it's something that I did in my classroom is we kept a parking lot. And so some of those times we could have a rich conversation. It, it was a perfect opportunity. There was flow to it. Um, you know, students were wanting to participate. And other times questions would come up and we would add them to our parking lot of things that we were either going to research or we really wanted to do a deep dive in that we wanted to spend more time on a later date. So I, I think that's a good tool that we can use as well. So when you say parking lot, you had a place where you would store some of these questions so that yeah, you a, a huge it. giant post it, you know, those poster size post its. Yeah. And it was something that was important enough that we wanted to spend time on and we wanted to make sure that they knew it wasn't going to be brushed aside. I love everything that she just shared. Please. So I had a, a great experience. My first year in seminary, I had a great companion. Mm -hmm. And um, we agreed at the very beginning that if students had questions, nothing else mattered. So if we got asked a question, and we really didn't have too many of them situations where we couldn't field it immediately. If, if, if Thomas got asked a question, he'd look at me and say, what do you think, Scott? And, I, and if I were teaching, the question came to me, he'd say the same thing to me. And if we didn't that is have brother that absolute Anderson. perfect answer that we knew right then and there, we would go say, all right, how can we do the answer? Right, right there in front of us, we go find the answer. Turn it into a lab. Right. I have enough lab. And, yeah. Um, too much lecture, not enough lab. That is a training for another day, as our classroom should look much more like a gym with exercises and active learning. And what a great opportunity to stop and go, I don't know. Let's take the next 10 minutes and let's study it and see what you can find in scripture that can help us understand this better and just let them go. Even if you do know. Even if you do know. Yeah. <laughs> Shut your yapper, so I hear you say, right? As a teacher, let them go. And you were commenting about how well you as a teacher know your students. I think that it's really important to facilitate the students getting to know, know each, each other, other mm -hmm. so they become a blended team. They'll, they'll be much more comfortable, yep. confident with each other. Uh, it's a much more secure and safe environment for them to really talk with them. Yeah. We spent one class on more gym, but half our students were athletes. We talked to the parents on working out physically and spiritually. And one of the kids used this talk a couple weeks later in the church. So that was a good way to get, you know, training in a physical sense versus training spiritually and try and make the two very relatable. It was a very good lesson. We, we, have, we have some eager youth. If you just if we just gave them some space and allow them time, they will astound you with what they find in scripture and the thoughts that they come up with. Um, let's do a practice. Um, what she did on the board, uh, I want to do. Can we take any of these? Now this is hypothetical question, so you're not gonna be able to know the student that this comes from, but maybe you can imagine one of your students asking one of these questions. Um, if you were to look at these that I have here, the 14 I have here, or if you have one that maybe you know of, which one of these do you want to practice examining with an eternal perspective? Look 
pick any of these, or you can just give me one that you feel like you've you've received recently. Yeah. F. <laughs> D is a good one too. Why is the temple or church so exclusive? Boy, those are two different depths of students, right? <laughs> if one of them saying all I get when I fast is hungry, there's some things that you so, so there's gonna you're gonna approach that one differently than why is the church so exclusive? <laughs> I don't know what it is. I'm just we <laughs> see it. Let's do D first because I feel like that's the harder one. So we're going to talk about church exclusivity. Okay, so here's your question: Why is the church so clickish? Why is it so exclusive? Imagine that is a student asking you that in class. You're talking about the house of Israel. You're talking about the covenant story, God's chosen people. The student raises their hand and says, why is this so exclusive? Okay, now, before you launch off into say, uh, well, Psalms 24 is really talking about, or, you know, instead of jumping right into a verse to try to answer the question, let's pause. What do you know about our, this generation of youth what is happening in the background? What are some worldly assumptions or concepts that this person probably thinks or believes that would make them ask this type of question? Go. They have been taught that tolerance is the highest virtue. Tolerance. They, they have been taught quite a bit in their generation that tolerance is the highest virtue. Meaning? Than honesty or truth or, or meaning accepting yes you know, accepting people yeah amazing. tolerance is is the best okay what else are they thinking what are some other common concepts oh well, we there's one here one here go ahead sorry i think that they hear words like membership and uh, you know recommend and and some of these kind of words that sound and, there, and like she's saying, it sounds like a privilege. Um, and privilege doesn't have a very, so the words don't always have the best, I don't know if I'm saying that right. Yeah, church, church culture and vocab, we're using words like, you know, let's think of a common phrase, membership has its privileges. So, but being privileged nowadays is not a good thing in the world. I think maybe, Ask additional questions to find out what exactly they mean by the church being exclusive. It might be simple as they don't feel like they're part of the group. Yeah. What are they experiencing in church? They don't feel the big word belonging. Yeah. Okay, how would you put that into their thought process? Like how would you say that as, as if that's coming from them? What are they thinking they're doing? What do you mean? Everyone has the same work. But we might not all be worthy. Okay, yeah. Um, my parents want me to just hang out with other Mormon kids. And Mormon Hill at the end is. I don't know if they're still existing out there, but yeah, I can hear it. Family culture is exclusive. And some of us are like cringing a little bit because how many of us kind of have the rule that you only date? <laughs> right? Goes into the peer groups because all the, I don't know about other high schools, but if you can, all the students, not just the other students, all the students know there's one and one, and that's just one and one. And they don't feel like there's an open 
I would. You do definitely. Have you ever been in a ward that was super clicky? Have you ever been in a relief society or elders quorum that was super clicky? They're not wrong. Okay. I, I saw another hand over here. Okay. They are also dealing with why can't my gay friend someday be married to his companion in the temple? I mean, it's, well, it's kind it of is both a, of these. It is everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It, is, it is everywhere. I, I'm, I'm surprised myself, personally, every turn missionary, that we don't understand a lot of chapters. Not my mission. But why, but, but why is that? What is what is missing? It's a misunderstanding about commandments. So what do they view about commandments? Or, or they're, they're, yeah, they're less protections and more restrictive. Like yeah. Commandments. Um, Anthony, and that's what you talked about when I was last at the BYU this last spring. Even in the Christian denominations that we share faith in, the communal sex and other Christian faiths don't have a problem with it. So we're even in our fellowship with other Christians, we don't see morality the same either. So let's let's flip it now. You guys did a good job at identifying kind of some assumptions. Now flip those. What do we know about Heavenly Father, His love for His children, and His plan of salvation? Pick any of those assumptions, and what is the truth? Tolerance is not the highest virtue. What is the highest virtue? If it's not tolerance, then what is it? Love, love of God. but you can love oh. without tolerating. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I heard love and obedience. Mm -hmm. There is some. Hey, this is interesting. Love of God. So the highest virtue is love of others, and the other way of saying this is love of. God. Yeah, barely. Barely. Okay. You can't. You can't love somebody and not be actually in the act of obedience. Okay. Pick another one. Yeah. Well, I think for the church culture one, I think a, a consistent theme in the scriptures is that we are peculiar people. And yet, we may be a peculiar people. Well, what's the other side of that coin? Well, that the, there's good. That's we're we're the salt of the earth. You know, I mean, if this, if the, for what purpose though? To gather, to, to gather to Israel, the Lord's work. which is nothing but inclusivity, right? Mm -hmm. So you do have the church is supposed to be peculiar, but for what purpose? To gather. And I think going back to what Julie said about the exclusivity among the kids, we have to acknowledge that. There's imperfections. We have to be like, yeah, you're right. Sometimes it is, and that is not right. We have to call that out sometimes. That's true, and that's true. True in that it's happening. Right. True in not that it's truth. Right, not that it should be. Right? Does that make a difference? Yeah. I think church itself shouldn't be exclusive. It's come and see is what we're told. You know, yeah, right. right. And right. everybody needs yeah. to be welcome to come to church. The temple is exclusive because you have to... If we had a certain level into the temple. Okay, now let's let's tackle this one. Because that's what you're talking about now. Yeah. The church is not exclusive. The church is completely inclusive. Anybody can go to the temple. Depends on how you're gonna want to describe and define that part. Church? Mm -hmm. Well so I'm, What's all church? I'm saying is this the temple's completely inclusive. All you have to do is Obey the commandments, get <laughs> baptized, be worthy, have a recommend, and go. Now, my point is define church. Are we talking hierarchy? Are we talking about, are we talking about President Nelson? Well, how would you answer that? President Nelson is inclusive or exclusive? Oh, he's very inclusive. It's completely inclusive. And so is the Columbia 12. If you define the church as its members, 
Well, it's a mix. <laughs> it depends. I I I, I agree a hundred percent. The temple is open for all. We call those standards. Is that still exclusive? How exclusive is the word standards? Is that exclusive? It's not. It's not. We have standard in education. There's a there is an expectation. Standards and expectations. Yeah. So I think. You have to go into the they don't feel belonging part because the other yeah. part of that is that um we're not just members of the church and at church to belong but also to become right sure so those are two things that um play hand in hand with one another yeah. and if it's all about belonging and not about becoming something more than we were mm -hmm. then the balance is off. And if it's just about becoming and not about belonging, then the balance is off. We can change this one from commands are restrictive to commandments are protective and they help us become, right? We, everybody has worth, but we're dealing with standards. Um, okay, now, pause. If all we get from this exercise is that we have all the answers, we missed it. Because the point of this exercise is your kids are going to come with questions. And if they ever feel shut down by you, they will stop having questions. Yeah. No, that's not true. They will continue to have questions. They will just not ask you about it. Yeah. There will be questions about you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as the caution for the day, and then I'm going to actually turn the time over to Sister uh, Naren to kind of wrap up some just nuts and bolts things that she had. Um, I am currently teaching a class, in, in, so this is the young adult level, right? These aren't seminary age kids. These are kids who are, they're summer sales. They are, most of them are actually finishing BYU. They're, they're returning missionaries. They're married in the temple. They're, they're all, it's, a, it's a married class. And uh, we are doing a subject that is pretty awesome and sacred, and we have a great experience together. And I was going to be gone a couple weeks ago, so I had somebody come and fill in who I kind of considered would be kind of an expert in the uh, subject matter of what we're talking about. And I, and I thought this would be great. You guys, we're going to do a QA and a anyway at the end of the class time frame. And so let's, let's have the expert up here. You guys just pepper them. All the questions you feel like you have, and again, I'm telling you, these are a mature return missionaries. They they know what they know what they need to, what they want to ask, and things that are currently important to them. And when I came back in, it was really interesting how fast they felt shut down by the authority, and how quickly some of them said, "I asked one question. This is how I was responded to." I left, or I didn't want to ask another question after. So this exercise is a couple of things. Number one, I wanted you to I wanted to see how hard it was for you to think like them, to get to get behind the question. That, that's a skill all on its own. The second one is is how how are we able to kind of work through uh, adjusting? And really, the skill will be not you giving them these orange answers. But can you stop it as a class? Can you turn it into a lab and say, that's a really interesting question. Can we work on this question together? Okay, let's, let's, let's plan this out. Let's do a whole process together. Because at the end, all of us can say, this is the highest priority. And we can testify of Jesus Christ now. Really hard to testify of Jesus Christ here because you can stand and tell a youth who feels not belonging and say, no, Jesus does love you. But their experience does not shape and does not align with that. So you can say all you want. It's not going to do them any good. But as you process through the plan of salvation and they start to see things at a wider view and see things as God sees them, the Spirit can only testify. And you can say, Jesus Christ made this possible for you. Jesus Christ made this possible for you. He made that possible for you and all of these things, and suddenly you turn a really sticky question into an opportunity to testify to Christ. You're probably not going to answer their questions the way they want you to every time. But if you can invite the Spirit, and let the Spirit actually do the teaching, 
you will never have a failure experience. That's my promise. Um, doctrinal mastery, do not skip it. Do not, don't, don't, don't think, uh, I, I'm going to spend more time in Job. Um, this is too essential for our generation of youth who are asking questions and looking for answers. Um, you're training them as much as you're teaching them. So look for opportunities to teach them. Okay? We'll spend more time studying this. This isn't our one go. This is our first coat of paint. We'll do a couple more coats of paint as we go through. Okay? But this is religious education. And this works. Because I've seen it work. And it changes the life of students as they, as they see themselves as Jesus. Is. And I say that when you describe them. Yeah. Yeah. So let's do this our first code of paint. When are we going to meet together once the school year starts? We will meet, um, I'm working through it, we're going to meet as probably as stakes. I'm going to try to do that mid semester sometime. We're going to try to do another kind of conference thing in January, and then we'll meet again as stakes in March. So I'm going to try to get in front of everybody four times, but then I'm going to give lots of micro trainings too. I'll send you some YouTube feeds. Okay. August 13th. And we have invited all the way up to Modesto, all the way down to Porterville. I think you have an answer. Wow. <laughs> so it'll be good because it'll give you more opportunities to receive training from three different coordinators. And so, it'll Hey, we good? Hey, I'm I'm gonna leave you be. Okay. Okay, my concern uh, when wise training goes after something like that is that we all feel like the spirit goes whoop and we start focusing. But I I want to just I just had this thought come into my head and I'm gonna share with you wise. Sorry. And while I see everybody, right? Please consider wise to be a tool in your teaching that helps um, continue the spiritual aspect of your calling, not the luxury of a app that you have to keep your hands on, okay? <laughs> because this really is where we see where students are, um, who needs help, who's struggling, who's missing, who's, you know, that kind of thing. So there were just a couple of things that I wanted to um, go over with you real quickly. So I, I just pulled up my class, so it was easy to see really quickly, but um, I wanted to show you a couple of things that you need to be aware of right away. When your class comes up, okay, backtrack me just a second. If, um, if your class does not have students in it, it's probably because you are a freshman teacher and I haven't gotten a list from you yet. Um, everybody else I took last um, semester's kids and just moved them forward in grade, right? So there will still be kids that aren't, you know, that have moved in, that you know, aren't going to be coming. I don't know. I just moved them forward. So please, you know, if there's kids that need to be added, taken away, move to a different class, just let me know. I have no problem moving kids around. But especially those of you who have freshman classes, I will actually need a list from you to, to know who is going to be in the class because I have no idea. So, um, all right. So now moving on. When you get into WISE and you get into class, you're going to see the list of your students on the summary page. And there is, it's a student status right above it, and you're going to see this little question mark, and click on that. It'll show you what all of the little icons mean. There are two that I want you to pay the closest attention to. This one right here, it's like a little piece of paper with a um, pencil on it for those of you at home and circling the cursor around it, and you can see that. Um, but that means that the a uh, parent agreement has not been signed, right? When a student comes into seminary for the first time, 
they either need to fill out a paper form, which is like kind of going the way of the dodo, but um, you know, they can go on my seminary and register their students. They just put in all their information, you know, uh, contact information, things like that, what grade their student is going to be in, that kind of thing. And then um, sign that parent agreement. That parent agreement often gets confused with the word registration. Okay, so you might hear the word registration and think, oh, well, they're, they're in the class, so they're registered. And that's not what we mean. Registration kind of gets confused for a lot of different words, a lot of different things. But um, if that icon shows up, that means that their parents have not signed that form and they need to be told or be reminded uh, to do that. Where would they find this form? Um, there, it's actually really hard to find on the church website. Um, if you would like, if you need one, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, the the it's, digital thing? It's, yeah. It, oh, well, if they go on the My Seminary app, the parents can sign into My Seminary app. All their kids show up. The kids, it's usually the kids coming in as freshmen who've never been registered before that are going to need to have that parent agreement signed. They will, however, need to go in and update each of their students uh, who are like sophomores, uh, juniors, and seniors, go in, make sure all of the information is correct, click register. Okay? So that's where the registration comes. Do all students have to register again? Yes, every year. Yep, their parents just need to say yes, my kids can continue in seminary, all of our information is correct, basically what they're saying. Okay, if you have any difficulties with that, because there are glitches, there are glitches every year. If you have any difficulty with that, please feel free to call me, email me, whatever. Um, sometimes students will have difficulty getting in there. The majority of the time it's because back when they were 12 and there was some mutual activity where they had to register and they put in their information and so and but they didn't remember that two years earlier they already started an account they had the duplicate accounts the church is always looking for that original account and they're trying to sign in with their new account and so the church isn't seeing them. so it's very possible that that could be the case you know there's a lot of reasons sometimes we just throw cash and cookies and we're good you know i mean it just depends but if there's any problems, you know, just having contact me, I don't you know, that's, that's my job. That's what I'm here for, to help do that kind of thing. The other one that, oh, I better talk fast. Um, oops, let me get it off of his screen. Okay, apparently not hard enough. There we go. Okay, the other one I want you to look for is this little, it looks like a little graduation cap with an X through it, especially if you are teaching seniors. That means that there is something in the student's past grade, you know, uh, past years, that is keeping them from graduating. It could be that they didn't finish their reading one year. It could be that they missed a, three or four lessons. It could be that they missed like 40 lessons. I don't know. You know, it could be that they, but um, that, that is something that we need to be paying attention to. This last year at a graduation, there was some girl who thought she was graduating and was in tears because she was not called up there because she thought that her teacher knew that there had been makeup and the makeup didn't get put in, nobody knew about it. So please, please, please uh, make sure that if there's that little graduation cap that you're keeping track of that. They're going to put it off. They are. And you're going to tell them you do not want to wait till the last two weeks of your senior year to try and make up all this stuff. So don't feel like just because you don't teach seniors, you, this isn't important. Really be encouraging them because it's going to end up being, the, yeah. The, please, okay, last thing. Please, 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 please. Attendance at weekly at the least. So daily is like, Fabulous. We put it at the very least, please. I mean, you know, all her sir. None of these teachers are teaching anymore, so I can tell her story. I'm not like calling anybody out that, that, is, that, out that is here. But we had a teacher who did not put attendance in for like the last half of the semester. And when we finally got him to put his attendance in, two days before the end of the semester, 
all of a sudden, a whole bunch of his kids drop below 75%. And so now they're scrambling because they thought they were good. It said 100% on their, their thing. But when he finally did put in the um, attendance, suddenly they, they were way down. And so people were scrambling. <laughs> anyway, so please, please, please put in your attendance. The attendance shows up in the My Seminary app. So please do yourself a favor. When your kids come to you and say, what did I miss? What do I need to do to make up? Say, go to the My Seminary app. When the parents call you and say, what is my kid missing? Go to the My Seminary app. Don't do all the work for them. Send them to the My Seminary app, right? So oh, that is a very good thing. When you say My Seminary app, you're meaning like My Seminary dot church. Yes. Okay. Yes. Because the SMI app. No, that no, one's it's not, yeah, it's not it's supported to, by the church. Yeah, I was right? going to say, yeah, trying not to steer anybody that direction. It's still like in existence, but they're just they're, they're phasing it out. So yeah. please, can I send it out? Okay, I think we only have like five minutes left. Any other questions about why? We'll be going over again a, a lot about this during the, the training, uh, the conference training. So we will have. Have more about this so okay so for those of you who are brand new that i have not had a chance to talk to please stick around for a minute if you have any other questions haven't been able to get some of the teacher training anything like that this is the only three two stage for a few minutes so oh i have to kind of really really lost out on the sophomore year being the pandemic and the doing yeah so He's going to be a senior this year. I don't know how he can up to speed. So not that I guess he doesn't want to get up to speed. Well, I haven't talked to him about it. So okay. Last year he he yeah. had practically a hundred percent in the I would just encourage you to start now, and he's got his own here. Just, hey, just quit, really quickly, something that um, I do not broadcast to my students. By the way, I don't know if you, all of you know, I teach seminary too, so like, I, I'm in the trenches with you guys too, but um, one of the things that I, I just completely lost track of what I was saying. Oh, well, no, yeah, yeah, thank you. One of the things that I don't tell everybody um, immediately is they actually have a year after graduation to complete yeah. stuff. I don't tell them that because then they'll wait. But just to, if you end up with a senior at the end of the year, it's just like, I just can't finish all this. But they only have like 30 lessons or something. And it's like, okay, great. You know what? After graduate, you know, after class is over, okay, you want to eat stuff all the left. So. 30 lessons, that's, you know, maybe one of the percent, you know what I mean? You can encourage them to still try to get it done if they want to, if they just cannot get it done. All right, I think our, um, somebody to, oh, wait, we've got three chat messages. Hold on. Please, could you please get it? I'm working on that. Um, I think they, um, they, we talked about that in an um, administrative assistance meeting. And um, we're still waiting to get it from someone, and then I will pass it on to you guys when I get it. Okay? Yes, that's very helpful. Uh, can I get someone to offer a closing prayer for us? Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Oh, Great for the opportunity to get on the floor for the final instruction of tonight. The trust and the responsibility we have for teaching seminary. We pray that we might be able to magnify our colleagues, that we might touch these kids in such a way that they might um, feel spirit on a regular basis and that we might feel closer to them and that we might have testimonies that we can in the last half of our life. We pray that we may not go uh, in safety. We pray for that help in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you very much. Thank you for those of you who are joining us. Have a good night. I so I'm trying to do that right now. 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 I'm trying to do that right now.